Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Kelly here, Cancer and Lymphedema Physical Therapist. We are back again today with another video on debunking cancer myths. You can check out the last video up here and be sure to subscribe to see when related videos come out. And be sure to comment down below if you have any other myths that you wanna hear about in future videos. So today in this video, we're gonna go through four different myths about what can cause or grow cancer. And we're going to explain what is the truth and debunk what is not. There are some small reports that suggest that deodorants do contain harmful substances and chemicals such as aluminum and parabens. These chemicals can enter the body through the skin or through any openings in the skin, such as cuts or wounds, most likely from something like shaving. There are some small studies that show that those who use aluminum products under their arms do have higher concentration of aluminum in their breast tissue. However, despite this, it's concluded that there is no increased risk of developing breast cancer, mostly due to the lack of evidence to answer this question. So if someone has concerns, it is best to just look for products that don't contain aluminum or other harmful chemicals. So for example, I have two Dove products here, two different deodorants, one's a spray. This one does right off the bat say it has aluminum in it, and this one says it does not. So it even says 0% aluminum on the front and alcohol free. So just be sure to look at what you're using and make sure that you feel comfortable using whatever you find. Lastly, if someone does hear not to use spray deodorants before they go in for their breast screenings, just know they're not saying that because they're dangerous. They're saying that because spray deodorants can mess with the breast screening process and the results. Over the last few decades, there have been various claims that say if you wear a bra, you're going to increase your risk of developing breast cancer. The theory behind this is that if you wear an underwire bra, you're going to decrease the flow of lymph fluid through the area of the breast, which will cause a backup of toxic substances in the area, and that will increase someone's risk. There was a study that was done in 2014 that completely debunked this and no, there is no correlation of wearing a bra and increased risk of developing breast cancer. And as a lymphedema therapist, I will say right now, yes, you can back up the lymph fluid if you wear something like a tourniquet too tight. The bra would have to be really tight and someone really wouldn't be too much at a risk unless they do have a compromised lymphatic system. And again, they wore something too tight for too long. So it's really highly unlikely. And it's not likely that you're gonna have a backup of toxic substances more than you just will have some swelling. Cancer does have the potential to be genetic, but only about five to 10% of cancers are thought to be hereditary. The majority of people who get cancer do not have any correlation or genetic history. So therefore it is more likely to be related to hormones, environment, and lifestyle that cause cell mutation and then the cancer. Those who do have a family history of cancer are encouraged to speak to their doctor about this, possibly look at genetic history and correlation with this, and also be sure to stay up to date with cancer screenings. Genetic testing is becoming more widely available, especially in the last five years, which can play a significant role in looking at if someone has a genetic predisposition of getting cancer. And then vice versa, as we talked about the percentages, if someone has no family history of cancer, is their risk of developing cancer lower? No, it's not necessarily lower. If someone has a genetic history and it shows that they carry certain genes, yes, they're at a higher risk, and so you're lower than they may be. But again, 80%, 90%, 95% of cancers do not have a genetic history. So again, it has a lot to do with environment, hormones, and lifestyle. It is estimated that one third of women and about 10% of men use hair dye products in the United States and in Europe. There are over 5,000 different chemicals used in hair dye products, some which are reported to be of concern. 
there is no scientific evidence that shows that those in the general population with personal hair dye use have an increased risk of developing cancer. However, there are some small studies that look at those who have high exposure, such as hairdressers and barbers. The evidence there does show that there is a small increased risk of developing certain types of cancer, such as bladder cancer. Now, the International Agency for Research on Cancer and other regulatory uh, agencies do look at these chemicals and classify them and evaluate them. And as of right now, a lot of these chemicals are defined as probably carcinogenic to humans. And again, that is likely in large quantities or large doses. So as of right now, there is no safety risk to the general population for general or light use, but it is something that those who have high exposure level such as hairdressers or stylists want to be aware of when choosing their products. So those are the four myths for today. Again, if you have any myths that you want to see covered in upcoming videos, be sure to comment those down below and then subscribe to see when those videos come out. I'll see you all next week for another video. Thanks everyone.